broadcasting live from the School of Athens. This is Europe and the People Without History with Mr. Olson, everyone's favorite AP World History Review service. On today's episode, we are going to be talking about Period 3, the post-classical era, in the AP World History concept outline. Period 3 covers the years 600 CE to 1450 CE, and it's kind of a big period with a lot going on, so I don't want you to think that this uh, is a be-all, end-all video. Of course, if there are things in this video that don't are not recognizable to you, go ahead and uh, expand your knowledge of them on your own. So let's go ahead and get started with Key Concept 3.1. Key Concept 3.1 says a deepening and widening of net networks of human interaction within the within and across regions contributed to cultural, technological, and biological diffusion within and between various societies. Go ahead and pause me so you can throw that into your own words. And I'm back. People interacted more, and it led to some good things and some bad things. That's it in my own words. So let's go ahead and see what we got. Key Concept 3.1, Roman numeral 1, says improved transportation technologies and commercial practices led to an increased volume of trade and expanded the geographical range of existing and newly active trade networks. So let's go ahead and talk about those existing trade networks. If you remember from the classical era, we started to see the burgeoning of trade networks throughout Afro-Eurasia. So you saw trade within... Um, Europe and in Eur Eurasia. You saw trade in the Mediterranean that had been going on since uh, before the Ro Roman times, but you see the emergence of three major classical trade routes, the Silk Road, the Trans-Saharan trade routes, and the Indian Ocean trade. So if you don't uh, recall those, I have a video on my channel that you can always look at uh, for further clarification on those existing trade routes. So let's see how those trade routes became even more effective during this time period. The first reason, and pro probably the most important, is the improvement of technologies. In the sea, you see the advent of new and improved ships like the Chinese junk. You see new and improved uh, ship technology like the stern post rudder, which allows ships to more effectively sail in open waters. You see the advent of the triangular latine sail, which had been used by the Romans, but it was perfected during this time that allowed uh, sailors to go against the wind, and you see the Chinese invention of the magnetic compass give sailors a better idea of where they're supposed to go. On land, you see technological innovation as well in the form of stirrups and saddles, both of which allow people to ride their beasts of burden more easily. In addition to these improved technologies, you see the new uh, forms of credit and money economy, so an improvement of ideas. Bills of exchange and paper money were invented by the Chinese because they ran out of copper coins. This became known as flying money because it moved so quickly and there was so much of it that people dubbed it flying money. It was, could be used on either end of the empire. It was a very effective way of uh, buying goods. You see the advent of credit in these big empires. People uh, allowed to buy things and pay for them later. The Islamic Empire mastered uh, sacks or checks, meaning that you could buy something with a check that indicated that you had the money elsewhere and it guaranteed the person from whom you were buying the, the, the good that they would be paid later. And you see the emergence of banking houses throughout empires and in urban centers that were going to take care of all these new forms of credit and money economies. In addition to new technologies and new ideas, you also see the emergence of new states that help protect and encourage trade. These include, but are not limited to, the Islamic empires, the Mongols, Byzantine empires, especially in their city of Constantinople, Tang, China, which is pictured there to the right. You can see that, that it was uh, instrumental in protecting the Silk Road, and city-states in Southeast Asia and also East Africa. You also see urban centers throughout these um, states and empires that facilitate trade. Timbuktu in West Africa, Chang'an in China, Baghdad in the Middle East, Venice in Europe, Tenochtitlan in the Americas, and also Cahokia in North America along the Mississippi River Valley. These urban centers served as places where people could trade, and therefore trade was more effective and easier. In addition to, to contributing protection, states also provided infrastructure. For example, the Incan Empire provided the road system. The Aztecs also used roads. Um, the Hanseatic League was a, a series of trading partners within Northern Europe during the High Middle Ages. And prob probably the best example of a state contributing more than protection and building infrastructure was the Swede dynasty's building of the Grand Canal that connected North and South China. This led to a number of different things, one of which being the movement of food, which allowed for an increase in population in China at the time. However, 
uh, is pro probably one of the reasons China becomes such an important player on the world stage uh, during the post-classical era. So moving on to, three, to key concept 3.1, Roman numeral 2, states that the movement of peoples caused environmental and linguistic effects. Now we're talking about migrations. You know we're going to have to talk about those Bantu, so we'll get to them in a second. Humans adapted to the environments as they migrated and, interaction, and interacted. It should be no surprise. The Mongols used horses as they um, moved around and they domesticated the horse in Eurasia, so it was a way that they adapted to, to the environment. The Vikings adapted to their uh, sea seafaring ways by building longboats, which were, were uh, very broad and large boats that navigated easily through wide waters but could take a beating. And then the Arabian use of the camel in the desert shows their adaptation to the environment as well. Humans migrated which also changes the change the environment. The Mongols um, are said to have caused reforestation by their depopulation of people, um, removing carbon from from the air and thus combating glo global warming on an early stage. Funny side side note there. Um, you also see the movement of species throughout Polynesia. For example, they have chickens on Easter Island. Chickens are native to Afro Eurasia. They must have traveled to. Easter Island via the Polynesians and their canoes. You also see agriculture and iron technology move with the Bantu, which of course is important because it allows the Bantu to exert their power over other people throughout Africa. And human movement also causes the diffusion of language. Obviously, Arabic is moved throughout the Muslim world since you needed to speak Arabic in order to understand the Quran and to be exalted in Muslim societies. And then Bantu languages were spread throughout Africa. We know that the Bantu are the linguistic predecessors to much of the peoples who live in sub-Saharan Africa, and therefore were able to uh, discern that the Bantu took their land language with them. So, people are on the move. Key concept 3.1, Roman numeral 3 says, cross-cultural exchanges were fostered by the intensification of existing or the creation of new networks of trade and communication. So when we're talking about new networks of trade and communication, we are talking mostly about Islam. Now make a note for, for yourself that Islam is the fundamental idea that is sort of running through this entire period. The emergence of Islam is going to affect everything from mercantile activity, military expansion, political diffusion, cultural diffusion. It impacts most of Afro-Eurasia during the time period. Its importance cannot be overseen. So let's talk about some major ideas in the spread of Islam. Well, Islam reflects an interaction with other religions, seeing as though it is monotheistic, just like Zoroastrianism, Judaism, and Christianity. Therefore, most Muslims see those other religions as people of the book and therefore extend a fair amount of time tolerance to them. Now, Muslim rule very quickly spreads throughout Afro-Eurasia. You might hear some people say that it's spread by the sword. Initially, that might be the case. However, it's spread most effectively and uh, most pro prominently by mercantile activity. It's also spread by the emergence of Sufis, who are Islamic mystics, that utilize uh, trading routes in order to spread their message from place to place. Now, Muslim tolerance and acceptance is important to understand because the College Board loves to make you realize that not all Muslim people are terrorists. So, in fact, most Muslim people are not terrorists. So, they like to bring up um, the situation in Cordoba, Spain, which was a Muslim overseen area and was a cultural epicenter, especially compared to what was going on in Europe during the Middle Ages. This was a place that had a university, it had a number of scholars, and it was very culturally diverse. There were Jewish people, Christians, Muslims, many different people living there in harmony. Now, this tolerance changes over time in that the first Islamic caliphate after the four, first four rightly guided caliphs, the Umayyads, were more of an exclusive caliphate, seeing as though they tended to favor Arabs. So Arabs held an exalted status in the Umayyad caliphate, whereas the Abbasid Caliphate, which took over after the Umayyads, um, consisted of outsiders who were from further east, and they tended to be more open and accepting to outsiders. As a result of this, they moved the capital from Damascus to Baghdad in order to uh, celebrate their Persian roots. So if you look at this map right here, it shows, shows you how quick Islam spread. You can see the growth of Muhammad in brown there, and then just not 200 years later, they've conquered all the way to Spain. And you'll note that 
um, Damascus, which is right up here by Jerusalem, the capital is moved from there to Baghdad. So it's, it's a pretty significant shift in the center of the Islamic empire. In addition to Islam, you also see uh, merchants of other religions spreading their culture along with their good. Buddhist goods. Buddhist monks get along the Silk Road and not only spread their religion, uh, but, but spread other cultural ideas and goods. You've, we've talked about this image before. This is one that, that uh, you should take note of. Um, it shows that, that Buddhism is favorable to merchants because those merchants will give back in monetary ways. You see Muslim merchants in the Indian Ocean, which spread the religion, as indicated on the previous slide. Chinese merchants go throughout Southeast Asia, and you see the imposition of chi Chinese culture in Japan, Korea, and Vietnam. Now, those places take a different amount of Chinese culture and implement a different amount of Chinese culture. And while they all remain relatively autonomous, they do adopt some aspects of Chinese culture, most notably the writing. Uh, in addition to these, it, or as trade routes and exchange networks open, you see travelers chronicle their experiences. The two most famous are Ibn Battuta, the Muslim explorer and Marco Polo, a Christian explorer who says that he traveled from Europe all the way to China to the court of Kublai Khan when the Mongol Yuan dynasty ruled over China. I don't think that's true, but the college board thinks that you should know who he is, so whatever. Anyways, continuing right along, cross-cultural interactions uh, led to the, the diffusion of culture. So you start to see religious syncretism, Neo-Confucianism, Zen Bu Bu Buddhism start to emerge in China. Obviously, Neo-Confucianism is Confucianism with some Buddhist elements in it. It's a more conservative type of Buddhism, it still has a lot of the Confucian undertones to it. Zen Buddhism is a mixture of Taoism and Buddhism, so it's a it's an enlightened and uh, type of Buddhism that favors the nat natural world more than uh, old aesthetic Buddhist would. You see uh, the emergence of Islam into West Africa, and it gets there via the Trans-Saharan trade routes. Uh, the vast empires of Mali and Ghana are trading gold for salt in North Africa, and they just happen to pick up Islam along the way. You also see cultural diffusion in the Americas, where the uh, influence of grandfather civilizations influenced the, develop of, uh, the development of larger civilizations that emerged during this time. So you see the Olmec and Mayan influences on the Aztecs, and the Shavin and the Moche influences on the Incan empires. In addition to cultural diffusion, you also see technological diffusion. The most important technological advances of this time are those that are uh, pioneered in China, so gunpowder and paper to be specific. Both of those travel early on to Arabia and then eventually on to Europe. You see uh, Arabian spices and Arabian knowledge go to Europe, largely because of the Crusades. And you see Europe really giving nothing to nobody. Shocker. And Key Concept 3.1, Roman numeral 4, says there was a continued diffusion of crops and pathogens, including epidemic diseases like the bubonic plague, along the trade routes. So, as we know, tr trade routes tend to move many more things than just goods. You see plants, animals, and pathogens move. Bananas move throughout sub-Saharan Africa and allow for the increase in population. Champa rice has a similar effect on East and Southeast Asia. It's a type of rice that is uh, initially cultivated in Vietnam. It allows uh, cultivators to get two, sometimes three yields a year, which vastly increases the amount of food that one can produce. In addition to these really good things that help population grow, you also see the spread of the plague from East Asia to the Middle East and to Europe, which of course decimates populations. So we're talking all about interaction in this first key concept, and that, my friends, is how you reach nirvana. This is your Buddha signing off with a wonderful, wonderful video.